Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final part of this three-part video series where we are demonstrating our own implementation of a DIY low-cost RTK GNSS Geo location hardware solution and in this video series we're looking at the applicable software configuration of each. In the first part of the series we looked at how to survey in our antennas which is installed within or in a fixed location and we can do that either using a survey in method or triple p for much more accurate measurements but it takes quite a bit uh, longer to accomplish that then the second part of the video we, we looked at the configuration of our base station or entry caster what uh, messages must be enabled on the receiver for the corrections as well as uh, some of the other message types how do we configure that serial stream to be passed into the correct format and where do we send that data to a end destination in our case it's RTK to go to a particular amount point to make those uh, corrections available to a rover somewhere in the field within the vicinity of your base station so in this final video we're going to show the working configuration of our own rover implementation this is again an identical uh, U-Blocks uh, ninth generation F9P receiver from SparkFun and we've coupled this in a mobile unit to provide the corrections we're using the SparkFun uh, Bluetooth module I believe it's called the, the Mate Gold Edition that provides you with some good range and that can connect to a cell phone and using the 4G or 5G or LTE backhaul you can receive those corrections from the internet and broadcast that over Bluetooth and that is sent into the UART port of your GNSS receiver. We also have a few other components in there which you can uh, view on the applicable article which will be published together with this um, video series just to provide a bit more in-depth explanation of our uh, solution that we develop. So we currently have the U-Center open once again with our rover installed. Note that this is inside of a building so not the best signal reception but there's a few satellites being received. This will be a relatively simple and straightforward video as it's only some of the messages and ports that requires the correct configuration but it is critical for uh, correct operation especially the ports what are the input and the output messages. So referring to my notes once again um, all the RTC messages on the module itself needs to be disabled. So once again if we select the messages tab over here if we scroll down to the RTC messages you will note that all of these flags are currently disabled. It does not in and of itself uh, need access to these uh, correction messages on any of the ports which is why they are all disabled. Moving on to the NMEA messages, these need to be enabled and we enable it both on the UR2 as well as the USB interface uh, ports and this will ensure that the correct type of information is passed along to the uh, module if I understand the process correct or rather also back to your Bluetooth um, receiver as this also is a bi-directional communication channel with your cell phone application. For our cell phone application we're using the popular Intrip client. It's a square blue logo with a capital letter N. If I pronounce it correctly it's uh, Lefeb, uh, the the publisher of the this Android application. It's free, lightweight and easy to use and works with most Bluetooth receiver without any problem. So again you can see which of the NMEA messages are currently enabled. Again it's basically the first one, two, three, four, five that we have on our working configuration or six and then all of the others are disabled. And moving on, the raw X or the raw measurements also once again will be disabled. So we can confirm this the RXM raw X measurements or messages are also disabled. 
for navigation purposes so because this is operating sort of in a, a true receiver mode we can scroll to the navigation section over here and you will note that the navigation message 01-13 nav hppo is ecf i believe that has something to do with the uh the actual position of the antenna that's enabled on port uart1 and then the usb port then the second uh message that's the only one that i see that is currently active we have the position LLH or navigation message 01-02 that's enabled on UART port 2 and then USB as well. Looking at the other ports, all of these are disabled. So it's only those two navigation ports uh, with that particular configuration. Then finally, the actual port of this uh, receiver. If we first take a look at UART port 1, you will note that once again we have a 115-200 port rate with all the message uh, options uh, selected over there. Looking at the row in front of me, I can see that the RTCM correction uh, masking on the PCB itself, it is TX2 and RX2, so I presume that's uh, UART2. The protocol in is connected to our um, Bluetooth receiver itself. So this is the, the data coming into the RTK module and then provide the protocol out. So what's provided, I believe, back to the receiver, if I understand it correctly. We only want the UBlox messages and NMEA messages. It doesn't help to send the raw RTCM messages back in because that cannot be used by the uh, receiver itself uh, or rather it's it's not necessary to send that back to our application which already receives the RTCM correction information again a board rate of 115 to 100 and then finally USB we have the protocol in uh, we accept all the UBlox messages NMEA and the correction messages but the protocol out uh, which is essentially showing the data over here since we connected to USB it's only the NMEA message option that we are uh, getting out of this particular port so there's the the three port configuration nothing overly complex and that is all that is required for a uh, working configuration in our instance for a Rover module, all the applicable links to other authors, which we've also referenced extensively, uh, including Spark Fund's Getting Started Guide, to ensure that you enable uh, the right types of messages, configure your ports correctly for both your base station or interrupt caster. Luckily, that's a once-off configuration and installation typically, and then your Rover application. Once you uh, download the Entrip uh, client app on your cell phone, it's a similar uh, configuration that we did in SNP, and it only specifies where we're getting the correction data from. Again, rtk2go.com, you specify the port, you specify the mount name, you connect to the internet and the Bluetooth module, and it's a seamless integration to get that correction data stream into your Rover unit. Typically, we wait about 30 seconds uh, from a cold start for RTK corrections to actually work. On the small OLED display output, we can see this as 14 millimeter accuracy in the horizontal. So then we know that RTK is in fact working. There's also a flashing LED that provides a visual indicator of both uh, the GPS receiving a lock on for its current position and then the implementation of RTK on top of that to provide that 14 millimeter geolocation service. And with that, that concludes the three-part series of uh, our DIY low-cost uh, RTK GNSS geolocation um, hardware service. How it's configured, the article will contain all the necessary information, including the configuration details just in written form. I 
trust that this video series at least provides some light and visual indication on getting the right the correct type of configuration typically this information we found is rather unclear on the internet which is why we decided to create our own implementation and explanatory video just to assist anyone who wishes to develop their own system and with that thank you very much for for watching leave your comments below if uh, you're watching this video on youtube and best of luck with all your activities if you're also working with geolocation a really exciting and powerful um, new technology so from me andre brookman signing off <laughs>